Okay, good talk, everybody. Sorry for that slight delay. Um, I know we're up against the Darche Torah dinner, so um, we have to make it at least as interesting as that. Uh, we'll try. Um, tonight we're going to do Chazara, which is really actually a very important, a very important. Um, uh, I don't know. It's important. I guess it's important. It's, everything is important, but meaning something that comes up a lot, something that comes up a lot on uh, on Shabbos. Exactly, how to take your pot off the fire and to put it back. And uh, well, you can't do it on the fire, but the proper way of heating, keeping the food warm, and returning it back to the to the heat source. Let's call it the heat source. Just to um, just to review quickly from last week, so um, insulating. One, uh, there was a question at the end last week that I that I didn't uh, answer. It was a good question, and that is that if again we had we said in order to have a problem with insulation, insulating food on Shabbos, it has to meet four requirements. So, which was that it has to be fully covered, all meaning on all all sides. It has to, it has to be the, the insulation has to be up against the pot and it has to be in the original pot and your intention has to, meaning if it goes into a cliche, there's no insulation and your intention of insulating has to be for insulation purposes and not for, not for just uh, like to keep, to keep bugs out, to keep germs out, whatever it is, all right? So that's what you need all for. And then the question that was asked was, does that mean that you're allowed to, you're allowed to insulate on Shabbos with something that will add heat to the food on Shabbos if you don't meet all four of these requirements? And the answer is yes, you are allowed to. But as long, again, you have to meet all the requirements. So for example, like we said, when something is on a heat source and you cover over the, you cover over, let's say uh, you take a towel and you put it over a soup that's on a blech, so that would be considered adding heat. Um, that would be considered insulating with adding heat, even though the towel itself doesn't give heat. But since there's a heat source that's under it, so combining the heat source together with the towel will add heat. But if you just drape that towel loosely around the soup, or it doesn't fully cover the soup, then then you're not you're it's not considered insulation, and you're allowed to do that even on Shabbos. The only one that you're not allowed to do on Shabbos with adding heat is to take the food and put it into a cliche, meaning if you take your soup. So we said, if you take your soup and you put it into a cliche, then you could wrap that soup in a towel, even on Shabbos. But you're not allowed to take it, put it into a cliche, and put that cliche on top of a crock pot and wrap it entirely on top of the crock pot. I hope, I'm, I hope this is being clear. That you're not allowed to do. Again, if you have something on top of the crock pot and it's not fully covered, no problem to even do that on Shabbos. To take a soup out of the original pot and put it into another pot, which is a cliche, that you're allowed to do on Shabbos and then insulate, but only with something that's not gonna add heat. If it's going to add heat, then the putting into a cliche doesn't work. So basically, if you wanna take the soup and, and put into a cliche to maintain its heat and then wrap it in a towel or a blanket, then that would be okay, but not to wrap it in a towel which and which is then on top of a heat source because that would be adding heat and that doesn't work even with the cliche. I hope I'm being clear. If anybody has any questions, you can post the question now and I'll try and answer that before about uh, before we continue about that. But if there's no questions, then we'll continue with the with the Chazar. Okay, I hope I hope I'm being um, clear with that. Okay, so now we get to Chazar. Some call it, some pronounce it Ha Chazar, but Either way, the, the translation of chazara means that you're chazar, chazar, you're putting it back. You're taking something off the, off the fire and you want to put it back on the fire. The most common scenarios are taking soup Friday night and putting, meaning earlier, kids want to eat, eat the soup. So they want to, you want to take the soup and, and serve the kids first and then put it back on for the meal. Take chalam Friday night and you want to put it back or take chalun early Shabbos morning and then put it back onto the fire. So that is allowed if you meet all the requirements of what we call chazar. Now, what should be the issue? 
what should be the issue? Like we discussed, the food is fully cooked. So why can't I just put it back onto the fire? What am I doing? What am I doing wrong? It's not, it's not gonna cook it anymore. We say ain bishal bishal. There's no cooking after cooking. So why can't you just why can't you just put it back down on a fire? So there is a machlaikis rishainu exactly what the issue is with putting on putting on the fi- putting the food back onto the fire. One is because we're afraid they're gonna you're gonna mix the coals, which if you remember has to do with the shahia, which is the same chashash as leaving uncooked food on top of the on top of the fire without a cover on the fire. That's one. And the other shita is that because the reason that it's an issue is because it looks like you're cooking. Merci kemevashel is the term. It looks like you're cooking. By taking food and putting it back onto the fire, then it looks like you're cooking. So since it looks like you're cooking, then you might get confused and actually go and do some cooking. So therefore, Chachamim said no putting food back onto a fire unless, unless you do some changes so that will act as a reminder that you don't, that you won't come to to cook anything. Again, either because you're going to mix the coals or you're going to end up cooking something. Okay, so, and there is some confusion with it, especially since you have a Sabbath mode oven, which I imagine most don't make this mistake, but there there are those that do make a mistake and they think you put the, the oven onto Sabbath mode and then you're allowed to do whatever you want with it. That's absolutely not the case. As the Star K very, very Star K is the one that created this, and they, they very clearly on their website and many articles tell this to people that just because it's on Sabbath mode does not mean that you're allowed to just take food and put it and to put it back. And then you just put it back into the oven. Okay, so we'll go through exactly what you have to do in order to put things back, and then and then try and clarify all the common shadows that come up. Okay, so then it's really there's five requirements that need to be met in order to allow you to put the food back onto a heat source. Three are not negotiable. Uh, well, two are for sure not negotiable. And, and one is quasi-negotiable and the other two are negotiable. Now, you know, negotiable is a terrible, is a terrible uh, phrase to use. It's not really negotiable, but meaning that the point is, is that we have to know when there's room for leniency, when there's room for, for there's no room for leniency. So therefore, um, if we know which things, which of the required items are, are always necessary and which are not, then there will be hopefully less confusion. Okay, so the first is that the food has to be fully cooked. We discussed this a few weeks ago, and the reason for that is very simple. If you take food that's not fully cooked and you put it back on the fire, then you're fully cooking the food. And therefore, that is an Isser of Bishal on Shabbos. The classic example that we discussed of this is that if you have, if you went to take soup or you went to take chon, and then you realize that it's not fully cooked, then you're not allowed to put the, you're not even allowed to put the cover back on the chon pot because you're going to make it cook even more. Now you may ask, well, I don't understand. I thought we said according to halacha, cooking a third or halfway is considered fully cooked. That is true. Cooking food halfway is considered fully cooked in order to put the food up before Shabbos. However, when you take the food from half cooked or a third cooked and bring it up to fully cooked, that's also and that's also a considered cooking. And therefore, therefore it's a uh, problem. Somebody has to mute, please. Um, and therefore, it's considered cooking. So basically, we get, we're machmer both ways. You can, if you take something that's raw and you cook it halfway, that's considered cooking. And if you take something that's halfway cooked and you cook it all the way, that's also considered cooking. If somebody did cook something, took something that was half cooked and cooked it all the way, then that will not make the food also on Shabbos though. So we're strict that you can't, you cannot increase cooking from half or even 99% to 100%. That's also on Shabbos. If you did, then there's a lot of room to be lenient because bottom line is we do look at ha- cooked halfway as if it's cooked. Okay, so the first thing is the food has to be fully cooked. And if you realize that the food is not fully cooked, then it's absolutely also to put it back on top of anything. A blech, not a blech, um, on top of a crock pot even would be a problem unless it's not, unless it won't get cooked there. If it won't get cooked there, then obviously it's no problem. 
that would be no different than putting it down on top of a, a table. Okay, so the first thing is the food has to be fully cooked. The fire has to be covered with something that's going to reduce heat, which we'll discuss that soon. But the second requirement, which is, which is non-negotiable, and that is that the fire has to be covered. You can never put something down onto an open flame. And the cover that you're putting down on top of the flame has to reduce the heat. The point is that it reduces the heat and it makes it look different than, than the way you would normally cook something on Shabbos. So that's requirement number two. Requirement number three is that the food still has to be warm. If the food is not warm and it's cold, then you're not allowed to put it onto the heat source. Those are the three that really are, are the most necessary. The fourth, is when you remove the food from the fire, then you have to have in mind that you're putting it back on the fire. For example, you eat the Shabbos, you know, you're eating the Shabbos through the afternoon and you took off the chalant and you're still holding it. And then somebody tells you, oh, you know what I want? I'm gonna eat this chalant, it's so delicious. I want to put, put it back so I could eat it later on in the afternoon. According to halacha, the ikr halacha, but we're going to see that there's room to be makel. You didn't have in mind to put it back. When you took off that pot off the fire, you did not have in mind to put it back. So since you did not have a mind to put it back, you cannot, you're not, at least, you're not allowed to put it back because you didn't have it in your das. You have to have it in your brain, in your head, that you plan on putting it back. That's the fourth requirement, which we'll get to again. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of leniencies on that. And the fifth one, also a lot of leniencies is that the pot still has to be in your hand. Meaning, even if you had in mind that you're going to put the chalent back on the crock pot or back on top of the, the stove, but if it's not still in your hand and you put it down, then you're not allowed to put it back on the fire. Okay, which is the main reason why you can never take any food out of the refrigerator and put it down on top of the blech. Because that that's taking food first of all it's cold usually so that's the third requirement you're not meeting and even if it was still warm but you put it down and you and you, and you put it down already so then you already lost out on being able to put it back okay so we'll get back to we'll get back to when when we could be more lenient with the last two but those are the five again the food the food has to be fully cooked second requirement is that the fire has to be fully covered to reduce the heat and the third requirement is that the food still has to be warm Fourth requirement is that you have to have in mind that you're putting it back onto the heat source. And the fifth is that it's, it's the, it should still be in your hand. Okay, if the food is still in your hand, then you're allowed to put it back. But if not, then you're not allowed to. So now let's discuss, okay, the food fully cooked. We already discussed that. Um, the second one, the covering of the fire. So what's the, the, obviously the most common way of doing this is the blech and that covers over the fire. Right, like we discussed with putting on the blech with heating up food from before Shabbos, um, it's preferable to also cover the handles, the, the knobs of your heat source. Because again, um, there's two reasons why they wanted us covering the heat source. One, so it shouldn't look like we're cooking. So therefore putting, covering the fire reminds us that there's something different about this cooking. That's the one reason. The other one is because they're afraid that we're gonna mix the coals. So if you cover over the fire, you can't, you're not gonna mix the coals. However, nowadays we don't mix coals, but we do, we do touch the knobs. So if you cover over the knobs, then that would be better because that takes care of, of any chashash whatsoever. But again, according to the Iker Halacha, you do not have to cover the knobs. As long as the fire is covered, that's the way it was done in the times of the Gemara. So therefore that's enough nowadays too. Even if the reason doesn't really apply, because what does it help? to cover the fire if you're just going to turn the knob. But we go with the way the Chachamim made the Gezerah, and that was the Gezerah that it has, the fire has to be covered. Yes, will it be better to cover the knobs? Yes, it's better, but again, not required. And just to clarify this, I think we mentioned it when we did Shehiyah, which is leaving the food on. There are opinions that for Shehiyah, for leaving the food on from before Shabbos, on top of a blech, there were opinions that said that they said B'Shem of Aaron Cutler, that you can just cover the knobs and you don't have to cover the fire. That's, that's true by Shehiyah. For Chazara, there, as far as I know, there are no opinions that say just covering the knobs is enough. You'd have to cover, the, the fire for sure has to be covered, 
and the knobs in a, some say the knobs in addition should, but just covering the knobs for in order to put the food back is not allowed. Okay. Now, <coughs> what happens if the fire is already covered? Which it is in our crock pots. Our fire, the fire is covered. I mean, it's electric, but whatever it is, you don't see the heat source. There's no way, there's no way you can mess with the coals. For example, let's say there were coals inside your inside your crock pot, which there are, it's just a modern version of coals, but it's covered. Right? So why can't why do I need to do anything to that? What about inside a, an oven? An oven, you don't see the most ovens. The fire is on the outside of the box, right? When you open an oven, you may see you may see some of the fire through through the cracks, but the fire usually the broiler maybe it's not the broiler actually has the flame inside, but in a in a regular oven you don't even see the fire. The fire is covered, right? So why why can't I just take food and put it back? That's like a built-in blech. So most opinions are, and this is the way we paskin. Most opinions are that that's not those both those issues, the crock pot and the oven are not considered blechs, even though the fire is covered. And that's because, like we said, that the, there are two reasons why they were afraid of this. They, one was because you may mix the coals, and the other one is because it looks like cooking. So the mixing the coals concern you don't have by inside our ovens and our modern day ovens. But you do have the concern that it looks like cooking because it's no different than what you'd cook during the week. So therefore, most places can say that's not considered a blech. And if you'd want to make a blech inside an oven, you'd have to take an insert, which would be a metal box, and slide it inside, and that would be your blech. And then you would be able to put food back into the oven. As far as I know, people don't do that. The other option would be to take foil and line the entire inside of your, your oven and then that would be okay. However, there are some opinions that do allow it. So if you're ever in a scenario where somebody is putting food back into the oven, I wouldn't, um, they could very well be have, have who to rely on. Um, so I don't know if I would tell you not to eat there in the house, I'm proud, as long as they know what they're doing, then there's, there is what to rely on that you would be able to put food back inside, inside an oven, but it's really, really not the accepted sock. Okay, so that's, so that's, when we'll get back to the hot plates, which is a very, um, no pun intended, is a hot button topic, we will, uh, we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to soon. Um, and you know, truth is once we we once we're discussing, let's just, let's just discuss that. Okay, so what about putting food down on top of a radiator, which we discussed this, putting it before Shabbos. What about putting it on Shabbos and on top of a radiator on something, on something that's very hot? Is that allowed? Is that allowed? So um, the answer is on a radiator, all places can say that that's okay, even though it may, it may heat up the food. But the reason for that, I meaning when we say okay, it's okay, even you could take it right out of the refrigerator and you don't have to have it held it in your hands, et cetera, et cetera. You don't need to meet any of these requirements. And the reason for that is that nobody's gonna mistake putting food on a radiator um, with cooking. So therefore, it doesn't have any of these doesn't have any of these issues, and you'd be allowed to do that. Question is, what is a hot plate? Does a hot plate have the same din as a stovetop, or does a hot plate have the same din as a radiator? If you say it has the same din as a radiator, then you could take the food out of the refrigerator and put it straight on there on Shabbos morning or whenever it is. If you say that it has a din of a stovetop, then you would not be able to put the uh, to take anything out of the refrigerator. You would be able to put food back down on top of it as long as you met the five requirements, which is that the food has to be fully cooked, which is still be in your hand, and et cetera, et cetera. So that is, that's the big tumble with the hot plates. Now, of course, the hot plate that we're talking about has to be with no controls on it, meaning it's one, it's a one setting hot plate. Once that hot plate has different settings, then that has the same status according to all opinions as, as a crock pot or anything that has any, any stove or any, excuse me, any cooking, meta, uh, cooking, uh, cooking uh, device, and a device is also not the right word, um, um, any, way, any way that you cook that's adjustable, that's, 
you would as afraid, we're afraid that you're going to adjust it on Shabbos. So therefore, we're talking about something that's not adjustable. It could be a non-adjustable crock pot. It could be a non-adjustable hot plate. But do we look at that hot plate as something that, that is normally cooked on, in which case you have to meet the five requirements? Or do we say, no, nobody ever would cook on a hot plate? Who would ever cook on a, on a, on a one temperature setting hot plate? Nobody would ever do that. It has the din of a, of a radiator. And just like you would never confuse cooking with a radiator, so therefore you would never confuse it with a hot plate. Okay, so Ramosha Feinstein was of the opinion that the hot plate has the same din as a radiator and nobody would ever cook on it. So therefore, right? So therefore you would be, you would be allowed to take it straight out of the refrigerator and straight food straight out of the refrigerator and put it right down on top of a hot plate. Again, a non-adjustable hot plate. Um, and another thing, the assumption was is, and this is also important, that the hot plate can't cook. If the hot plate is a one temperature hot plate, but it gets to 500 degrees, then that's also, according to almost all opinions, that would not be allowed because you can cook on it. I Meaning it has to meet both requirements. One, that it's only warm. You can only use it to warm up food. It will not cook food. And it also has to have one temperature that just to plug it in and there's no, there's no way to adjust the temperature. That's the hot plate that we're talking about, okay? Putting, um, um, I just forgot what I was gonna say. Um, okay, whatever, I'll, I hopeful, hopefully we'll get back to that. But uh, again, so the hot plate, if we're talking about non-adjustable and it can't cook. From what I understand, I personally do not use hot plates. So from, from what I understand, some of the new hot plates get extremely hot and can cook. I once gave a shear on this probably 15 years ago, and it was a big debate whether hot plates could cook or not. Um, and one of the fellows brought it to the next year, he brought a hot plate. And from the beginning of the shear to the end of the shear, we put a pot of water on top of that hot plate to see if it would boil the water. If it would boil the water, then that's a no-go, that's too much. That's the, it can cook water. Um, from what I remember, the, it started, you know, on the, when a pot gets the little bubbles on the bottom, when it, when it starts, it's way before it starts boiling. From what I remember, that's what it did, but it did not, it then boil, but that was only 45 minutes. Maybe after that would be a problem. So if it says on the box, when you buy the hot plate, that it doesn't get above a certain temperature, let's say, uh, 100 something, 120, 150 degrees. Again, that's with the, the heat of the metal, which means that the food is not going to get anywhere near cooked. Then you're going to, then you can trust that. You don't think you have to experiment with it. But if you're getting, and I imagine if it has a hechsher on it, and I imagine, I guess you have to really read what the hechsher, what the hechsher says, but you have to see if the hechsher says it's, it's not going to cook, so then you could trust that. But if you just buy um, a hot plate in a, from a non-Jewish store and you have no idea if this thing could cook, then it sh you should, the responsible thing to do would be to, to test it, put an egg on there. If it could cook an egg, it's too much. If it could boil water, it's definitely too much. But again, the assumption is, is that most of the hot plates are not going to get the food that hot. So then you're going to be okay. Again, so according to Ramosha Feinstein, you are allowed to use hot plates on Shabbos, and that's from what I understand, most in America do that. According to the Poiskim and Eretz Yisrael, they were unhappy with using, they were, did not agree with using hot plates, but they didn't look at hot plates that it's an open fire either. Meaning you basically, and maybe I should have explained this before, you basically have three, three categories that you could have with a heat source. You could have, like we said, a radiator, which is nothing. That's not, you can take straight cold food and put it on there. Also as a disclaimer, if the if liquids, again, if the liquids have the ability to get to higher than 110 degrees and that liquid is cold, then you're not allowed to heat that up, not on a radiator and not on a hot plate and not on top of a crock pot. Again, cold liquids, we do say that there's cooking after cooking on cold liquids. So therefore, it doesn't make difference where you're putting it. If, it's gonna get, if the liquid is gonna get hotter than 110 degrees, then it's a problem wherever you put it which I'm assuming it's not going to get to that temperature, at least not on the most radiators. 
right? But again, going back to, so you have, you have a radiator, which is not even an issue of cooking. You could put whatever you want on top of it. Then you have a fire, which you can't put anything back on there unless it's covered. And then you have the middle ground, which is the hot plate. And this Rav Shemazal Menorbach does, and I think this is what's more accepted doing Eretz Yisrael, which he says, we don't look at it like it's an open fire. Meaning we said that a crock pot, we do look at it as an open fire because it's adjustable and that's the way you cook. Even though the fire you can't see, it's hidden under the metal, the, the metal, the metal covers the heating, the heating mechanism. But we look at that like it's open fire. So we don't look, according to all opinions, we don't look at a hot plate like that. We look at a hot plate that it's covered. So we look at it basically, the way to, to understand it, according to the machmirim, is that we look at a hot plate like it's a blech. So therefore you can put food back on there. It's not an open fire, but you have to meet the five requirements, which means the food has to be fully cooked and it has a blech. We're saying that it's considered a blech. The food still has to be warm. You have to have it in your head that you're putting it back and you also have to have it in your hand, which is why these pies can hold it. You're not allowed to take food out of from, from the refrigerator and put it onto the hot plate because you're missing you're missing um, two of the five requirements, maybe even three of the five requirements. Okay, so again, I just wanna repeat to be clear. The disagreement of a hot plate, the very simple way to understand the hot plate issue is do we look at a hot plate like it's a radiator, in which case you could do whatever you want with it. Again, assuming hot water, you, you assuming you're not putting liquids, it's gonna get hotter than 110, unless the liquid's still warm, in which case it's okay. Again, so if it's like a radiator, if it has a halach of a radiator, you could do whatever you want with it, which is what we, which, which in America most do. And then you have the Eretz Yisrael who say that it's not considered an open fire, but you do have to have the, the tanayim of Chazara, as we call it. You have to have the five requirements of Chazara in order to be able to use it, which means according to them, you're not allowed to take out food from the refrigerator and put it on top of the, on top of the, crock pot okay so now even those that are machma with the hot plates say that you're allowed to take a pot on on top of the hot plate and you're allowed to take food and put it down on top of that pot on top of the hot plate okay now you're really allowed to well let's just take a step back can you heat up food on top of a crock pot right is that allowed so that's not derech of cooking. So the paiskim all allow that, that you're allowed to take the food out of the refrigerator and put it straight on top of a pot that's either on top of the blech or that's on top of a crock pot. That's okay, okay because nobody's going to mix up. Nobody's going to mix up cooking with that you, uh, that you're going to be cooking when you take the food out of the refrigerator. Uh, you're taking in a pudding. Nobody ever decides to cook eggs in the morning with, uh, with putting it down on top of a crock pot. Right? So nobody's going to ever be concerned with that. So therefore, you're always allowed to do that. Again, liquids from the refrigerator that will get hotter than 110 are not allowed. Right? But uh, uh, this, any other food is allowed. What about putting it on an empty crock pot? Right? You already took out the crock pot, the, the insert, and now you just want to put food down inside the cylinder or even on top of the cylinder. So that's not allowed because there's no food that's on top of the, there's no food that's in the crock pot. So you're not allowed to do that. What happens if you just leave the insert in and there's no longer any food? Let's say you have the chalent in a plastic. So you take out the plastic of the chalent and you throw it in the, in the garbage and then you just put the crock pot um, um, insert back and then you put the cap, the, the cap, the pot cover and then you wanna put food on that. So the person don't like that because there's no food inside your pot. Right? So, but on top of a hot plate, the can, many pies can say that you would be allowed to just put down an empty pot and put food down straight from the refrigerator on top of that. Again, because since this, these hot plates have this middle of the, they have this middle of the road din, so therefore it's, uh, so therefore just putting an empty pot on there is going to be okay. All right? So that's basically, that's basically the, uh, the hot plate. Let me just let me just check some questions here. Um, 
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get to the covering the cut the the part in a few minutes. Okay, then uh, okay. So the next so one question here is a fairly common question. So the way, first of all, how do you make a how do you make a blech on a crock pot? So the easiest way to make a blech on the crock pot, I think it was discussed, but we have to discuss. It's always worth discussing it again. Is you take foil and you line the entire crock pot. It's, it can't just be the bottom, unless you know that the heating element's only on the bottom, but usually the heating element's on the bottom and on the sides. So therefore, you should line the entire crock pot with foil. A lot of places can say foil is really not so great, better to use parchment paper. If when you're pulling up the pot, the foil comes off with it, then you are allowed to put it back. You are allowed to make a blech on Shabbos. Let's say you forgot to put on a blech. Allah is you could take your blech and put it down on top of the fire on Shabbos, assuming that the fire is not going to make the blech red hot. If it makes it red hot, then that would be an issue, but that means the fire has to be on extremely high. And it's not going to do that in a crock pot. So therefore, if you forgot, let's say somebody decided that they're not going to have Friday night chum. So they didn't even bother putting in the foil because they didn't think they needed a blech. And then they decide on Shabbos that they're going to want a blech. So then you could take foil. Obviously, it has to be pre-cut foil. You're not allowed to cut the foil on Shabbos. You could take the pre-cut foil and you can line the blech and, and you can line the crock pot. And then that's fine. That would be allowed on Shabbos. So culture can, you're allowed to put back the foil that comes out. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, opening and covering oven doors is a good question. I hope to discuss that next week, Bez Hashem, because that's uh, that's common. But we're going to, I'm trying to stick to Chazorah. Can you put food by the warm, on the back of the oven by the vent? Yes, that would not be the, that would not be a way of cooking. So you can put it, you can put it there by the vent. Okay. Um, can you put it from one heat source to another? Um, that is complicated. I also, I think I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that for next week. Um, cause I'd rather just stick with all the basic halachas of Hazar. Um, yeah. So putting the hot plate, putting up, up, um, the question is if you have your hot plate, if it could cook, but you take a, you put upside down pans, if it's, if it's non-adjustable, then you could put the pans upside down on it and that would be okay. Uh, you would, you would, uh, like we said, an empty pot would be okay. So Rosham Azam says you can take an empty pot and put it face down and that would work. Okay, so now let's just discuss, let's just discuss, again, next week, as Hashem, I hope to do moving the food along on the blech, where on the blechs you can move the food and also the opening and closing, closing the doors. Yeah, adjustable hot plates, yes, even, uh, even according to Ramesh, as far as I know. If it's adjustable, then you would need some sort of blech. So you can cover it with foil, and then that would be a blech. You could do that. That's not, uh, that would be fine. By the way, just another question that I just thought of that, that nobody asked, but it does come up. If you want to use a blech, this comes up maybe more in the summer. If you want to use a blech to put dairy on it, you would be allowed to put dairy down. As long as you put down a layer of foil, you would be allowed to put dairy down on top of a, a meat blech. All right, just put down uh, some foil. For Pesach, you want to use a Pesach, um, a chametz blech for all year round. Uh, really, it should be covered, but this is, if you make it red hot, you'd be able to kosher it. Okay, but that's beyond what we're discussing now. Okay, so now, um, so the best way to take cholent and put it back is you have two people with you because you really want cholent to be in your hand. So you have two people, which is not always possible, which we'll get to, but you have two people, one one takes out the pot and the other one scoops out the chalun and then you put it back. That's the best way. That's the best way to do it. However, not always does everybody have that luxury of having another person there to help them. So in that case, and you want to take chalun or soup. So what you can do is you can take the pot and you could put it on the table and keep your hand on it. Put on the table, put on the chair, put on the countertop, and then you keep your hand on it the whole time, and then you take your other hand, and then you take out the challenge, and that would be okay. All right? Again, it's not as good as having somebody hold it, and you then this other person scooping out. But if there's nobody around, so then you could do that. Okay. What happens if the hand comes off? So then that we'll discuss. It's better though that if you 
if you balance it on something so that that's really like you're holding it. Meaning instead of just putting the, the crock pot down on the table or a chair and just keeping your hand on it, it would be better if you sort of balance it, but it can get a little scary when you do that. You don't want it, you don't want it to, to slip and fall, but uh, that would be better. Okay, again, so there's three levels. One is to have somebody else hold the pot and you scoop it out. Second one is to sort of balance it. So that's like holding it. And if you can't do that, then just put it down and keep your hand on it. Putting it down on the floor, I don't know, don't, it's not too common a question. Putting it down on the floor is not allowed. You would not be allowed to put it on the floor because once you put it down on the floor, that's looked at like you've given up on ever putting it back into the crock pot. So it only works to put it down on a chair, on a table or a, a countertop. Okay, um, so that, that would be the best way, that's the best way of taking it. Uh, yeah, so now what happens if by mistake, well, there's a, few, there's, a few, there's a few common things that happen. One is you decide to change your mind and put it back on the left. So we discussed that already. Um, if you forgot that if meaning, if let's say, well, there's, there's a couple of scenarios. One is that you didn't have in mind to, take, to put it back and then, but it's still in your hand. And then you say, hey, you know, I'm going to put it back. So Bidi Evid, you're allowed to do that. As long as it's still in your hand and you change your mind and then you decide you want to put it back, you're allowed to do that, Bidi Evid, right? Um, what happens if somebody and if somebody else took the challenge and they didn't realize that you wanted to put it back? So then that's also okay. If you tell them, no, 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 put it back, right? But this is all assuming that it was still in your hand, okay? If it was not in your hand, you put it down, it wasn't in your hand, and you didn't have in mind to put it back, then it's really, you shouldn't, you shouldn't put it back. However, if you're in a desperate situation and you need that shown for more guests or... or uh, or for whatever these kids, whatever it is, then you are allowed to, even if you're missing number four and number five, which is again, you took it off and you put it down and you didn't have a mind to put it back. Even so, you are allowed to put it back if you're in a desperate situation to make sure that, you're, that you still have hot challenge for later, okay? Or soup or whatever it is, right? But again, don't, if you have one or the other, if you're missing four or five, then it's much, you shouldn't do it but then you can certainly put it back, right? Meaning again, four or five is that you didn't have in mind to put it back and then you change your mind or by mistake, your hand came off the pot, right? If you have any of those, then you could put it back without an issue. If you're missing both, then if you're very, if you have a big need for it, then you're allowed to, then you're allowed to do it, okay? Um, Yeah, so that's so that's those those are the basic tenayim with these with the those are the the again the three that are non-negotiable is that it has to be the 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 heat source has to be covered and the food still has to be warm and uh, and what was the first one it has to be fully cooked and the last two are you can be maker with in in situations okay. And again, desperate situations. Now, let's just discuss. I wasn't sure whether to discuss this or not because I don't want to uh, do any um, confusion. But um, why we know that you're not allowed to mix food on top of this when some, when the when the pot is on the fire, you're not allowed to mix it. Why? Because we're afraid that by mixing, why was any why does anybody want to mix food on top of a fire? Because by mixing you are going to be cooking. You might be cooking some things and therefore don't mix something when it's on the fire. What about just taking straight out from the fire? Straight out, meaning you're pulling, you're taking your serving spoon, you're sticking it into the cholent, you're not mixing it, you're just serving cholent that way even when it's on the fire. So is that is that a problem or not? Okay, so for some reason, this became like, um, a very big misunderstanding in the halacha, right? Um, there's a chumrah of the kolboy. The kolboy was a rishon, and he was of the opinion that just like you're not allowed to mix food on a fire on within a pot that's on the fire, he also was of the opinion that you're not allowed to take food 
out on when it's on the fire. And therefore you have to take the pot off the fire and then serve the chalan, let's say, and then you could put it back, which is the number one reason for this chumrah why people have blechs. Because if you didn't go with this chumrah, then just take the food straight out of the chalan pot that's on the blech, right? But we know with this chumrah of the cowboy who says that you're not allowed to take things out of uh, out of a pot when it's directly on the blech. So therefore you need to take it off, okay? Now, there are some that say, well, the same way you can't take food straight from the chalant when it's on top, when it's on the fire, with a blech, without a blech, whichever it is, then you're also not allowed to take off the cover. Because what does a cover do? A cover, put when you put the cover back onto the food, it mixes together, all the steam gets together, and it helps cook it better. So that's the same, that's the same as taking food straight out, because you when you cover the, when you, meaning again, the reason why he says that you're not allowed to scoop straight out because it's gonna move, it's gonna move the chalent and it's gonna move things around. And therefore perhaps, even though the food is fully cooked, the chalent's fully cooked, perhaps it's gonna cook something extra. But it's not, again, even if you're not mixing, it's just, since things are gonna move when you're taking the food out of the chalent, so therefore we don't want you to do that. So the same thing is when you put on a, some say, when you put on the pot cover, that's also gonna mix things around. And you're not allowed to do that on Shabbos. Most Paiskin don't, do not go with that opinion that putting the pot cover on is the same as taking food straight out. Ramosha Feinstein certainly didn't go with it. So, and the many of, so it comes out that if you want to be strict and you want to check on your chalun just to see how it's doing, you'd have to take off the chalun, take off the pot cover, and then put it back, and then put the chalun back on the fire. Ramosha Feinstein, along with most Paiskin, say that that is not the same chashash and you are allowed to take the pot cover off and put it back on even when the pot is still on the fire that is the way that's the way and you certainly can rely on these on these opinions so if somebody um, wants to check on the cholent then you are allowed to you're allowed to take off the pot cover even when the cholent is still on the heat source okay although there are machmirim so but there's, uh, but there's certainly you can you can rely on the on the lenient opinions. Okay. Now again, getting back to the scooping straight out. So again, the ikar halach is that you're not allowed to mix even a fully cooked chalent when it's on the fire. Just taking chalent out without mixing is a chumra of the kolbay. Now why do I keep um, talking about this chumra of the kolbay? Because this is a chumra that most paiskim don't understand. Everybody tries to come up with reasons why he would say that that's not allowed because you're not mixing it and you're just taking out chalent. So there's different ways we mentioned in the price thing exactly why they say it's a problem. The number one reason is they say because perhaps you're going to move a little bit of the chalent and there's something that's not cooked and it's going to move and it's going to and it's going to end up getting more cooked. But again this is a chumrah. So what happens if you forgot to put on a blech and you don't have the ability to make a blech? or you're by yourself and you want to take chalent, or um, the pot is just too heavy even for two people to take out. Are you allowed to take straight out from the crock pot? So Ramosha Feinstein was of the opinion that you cannot take straight out under no circumstances. Are you allowed to do that? It's a, even though it's a chumrah, that's what we go with. The Chazan Ish, who's normally known as a machma was of the opinion that you are allowed to take straight out if it's too heavy for you or if you don't have a blech etc etc he's he his opinion was that you are allowed to take straight out the paiskin the contemporary paiskin say that you can rely on this chazanish in if you if it's very desperate and you need uh, you need the chalent and and for whatever reason you can't, again, either it's too heavy or you don't have a blech, et cetera, et cetera. You can, yes, rely on the chazanish. Now, I tell the reason, okay, whether you want to rely on this chazanish in regular circumstances, there's plenty of reason. I personally am make like this chazanish. Again, it wasn't my opinion. I go with my rebbeim who went, were lenient with this chazanish. I also don't use a blech. So that's why I don't really have a choice. So take off the, to take off the, the pot from the fire and then put it back. So I personally go with this chazanish, um, but the reason why I believe it's important to know about this chumrah of the kolboy is because 
a lot of machloikas has happened on Shabbos when by mistake somebody did take straight out and people start screaming and yelling and they think you're over on Isurim and it's terrible. The, the, the fighting that goes on with it is maybe I'm exaggerating, but the fighting that goes on is a whole lot worse than, than taking straight out from the crockpot. That's one. Two is then people won't use the chalun for the rest of Shabbos. That's without a doubt. I'm not, uh, it's certainly, even if, even if you say that you're never allowed to scoop straight out of the crapa, which is a chumrah according to all opinions, it certainly will never make your cholent not kosher. People go to somebody's house and they see that they take it out. Maybe the people don't know the halacha, they don't know the chumrah, and they say, oh, I can't eat the cholent. It makes all sorts of shalom bias issues. No, it will never aser cholent. As long as they're, as long as they're just taking straight out from the pot, it's no, it's no problem. Another thing, and these are two leniencies that would come out even according to all opinions, and they do come up. This does not apply to liquids. It only applies to foods. Does not apply, first of all, it doesn't apply to a solid, solid food. For example, you want to, let's say you have kugel on top of a blech. There is no chashash by taking a piece of kugel out of a pan when it's on the fire that anything is going to get mixed up. So taking kugel or solid foods that are not liquidy, you are 100% allowed to take even when it's on the fire. That's one. Then you have the other way. Let's say it's a liquid like soup with not a thick soup. A thick soup is like a chalent. But let's say it's a thin soup that doesn't have, and let's say you kept your chicken bones and your vegetables inside uh, you know, one of those uh, bags that are meant for that. And all you want to do is serve chicken soup, which is common Friday night. The kids want chicken soup before, before the meal. You do not have to take the pot off the fire in order to serve the chicken soup you could just take straight out of the pot without having to deal with moving it and getting somebody else to hold it etc cetera, etc cetera. as long as it's soup that's not thick if it's a vegetable soup then it's a problem that's more like chung so again i want to just um reiterate it because it's something that it causes causes quite a bit of stress if it's a kugel or a solid food like a piece of chicken you do not have to take the pot off the fire so if you want to take out a piece of chicken Let's say the chicken is in the oven and you want to just take out the piece of chicken. You do not have to take out the whole tray of chicken. Like we said, you, then you wouldn't be able to put the chicken back in, right? So you can just stick your, your hand inside the oven and take out the chicken and serve it. Same thing with kugel. And if it's something that's very liquidy, that doesn't really have much food in it, like soup, you can also serve that straight when it's on the fire and there's no concern. Another leniency is if Bain Hashmoshes, okay, which is the first, let's let's say the first half hour from sunset for the first half hour, certainly after after candle lighting, if the kids want uh, chalun and and you don't have anybody around in order to, or guests come and you don't, and you don't have anybody around to take the pot, but for the first half hour after sunset, you would, you do not have to keep this chumrah. Because, because it's been Ashmashus, which is as it is a, we allow the Rabbanons. That's a different subject, what exactly we do allow, what we don't allow. But since it's been Ashmashus and since this is a Chumrah, then we would allow you to also, without taking the pot off the fire, it would be okay. There is also an opinion, which is very interesting, this opinion, but it seems like it's, it's an opinion that's very not well known, but it seems like it's a, it's, it's a, if, fairly accepted opinion, just people are not aware of it, is that this whole concern of the cold bite, which is taking the food straight out that it may cook, is only if you don't have a blech. But if you have a blech and the food is on the blech, let's say the crock pot is on the blech, so then that will, there's not as much of a concern of the food getting cooked, and therefore you would be allowed to take straight from food that's on top of a blech. Whether you go with this or you don't go with this, is debatable, but it's an interesting thing because the main reason why everybody wants to put a blech is so that they can take the cholent off, serve it, and then put it back because they don't want to serve the cholent when it's on the blech. But there are many opinions that say because, specifically because you have a blech, then you are allowed to scoop straight out from the cholent. The point, the point being, again, just to review, or it's a little late, just to review is that just to scoop straight out from on the fire is a chumrah. That's without a doubt, according to all opinions, it's a chumrah. It's a chumrah that we keep, though, l'chatchila. The chazanish was of the opinion that if you don't, if you can't, for whatever reason, take the chalampad out, 
and put it back, then you are allowed to scoop straight out. Soup, that's a thin soup, clear soup, you're allowed to take straight out when it's on the fire. Solid, solid foods, you could also take straight out when it's on the fire. And benashmash, the first half hour after Shabbos, you could also take take straight out from, from the fire. Okay, I'll just look at some more questions here, and then we'll... Um, oh, so with the condensation on the top of the of the pot cover, I think we discussed this a few weeks ago, but just to just to chaza, when you take the pot cover off, so a lot of times there's condensation inside. If that 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 water is already cooked, that's for sure. So it's a chumrah. If it gets cold, it's a chumrah not to recook it. So as long as it's warmer than room temperature, then you would be allowed to put it back on without having to to dry it off. If it got cold because you had the pot cover cover off for let's say five, 10 minutes, whatever it is, probably five minutes is already enough. Then again, you don't have to dry it perfectly. You just, you know, knock it so that the main main liquid comes off and then that's enough. You don't have to make yourself crazy. Um, hold on a second, let's see what else we have here. All right, so upside down pans on a blech, we said from the fridge, um, it's not preferable. If it's on a blech, it's not preferable, just the upside down pan, but uh, it depends where on the blech. Next week, Bez Hashem, we'll discuss where on the blech. There's, there's very easy ways to be able to take food out from the refrigerator and put it onto the blech. Can you take a pan with food on top of an empty crock pot? Um, no, because that's on top of a regular heat source. You'd have to put it down on top of a of a pot with food in it. Again, just taking a pan with food on top of an empty crock pot is essentially putting on an, on a heat source that doesn't have a blech. If it has a blech, then uh, then I would say that you can. Well, no, even if it has a blech, if you're taking it straight out of the refrigerator, you wouldn't be able to. Meaning, bottom line is is that a empty crock pot um, is considered like fire, so you'd have to meet all five all five requirements of chazor. Right, so the drying the cover, we did that. Um, if the vegetables and chicken are not in a bag with the soup, taking out from the soup, so it would depend how thick it is. If, if you just use your judgment, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's such a difficult, uh, I know we're using the judgment, we don't like that. We wanna have very specifics, but if, if there's like large pieces of vegetable, then nothing's gonna get recooked by, by, uh, by taking out Taking out the soup. It's only if it's like a, a vegetable soup where it's thick, then then you have a then you have a problem. Right. So again, with the upside down pans on a blech, we'll we'll discuss we'll discuss that resolution next week. Um, it's not preferable because that's like an empty pot on top of of a of a heat source. But uh, next week we'll discuss the blechs because there's a few different areas of the blechs where you could put it, where you can transfer, you can move. Uh, but uh, it's a, it's complicated, so I don't know if we, we it's it's not really worth um, starting it right now. Um, does the warming drawer have the same thing as a hot plate? So a warming drawer, it depends. If it's adjustable temperature, which from what I understand most are, then it's considered a regular heat source, and you would need to line it with a foil in order to to put a blech on there. Um, if it's one temperature warming drawer and it cannot cook then it would have the same status of a hot plate. So whatever you would say by a hot plate, you would say by, by the warming drawer. But from what I understand, they're all adjustable. Oh, that reminds me one other thing. Again, with all warming drawers, um, you have to make sure that sometimes they have a safety feature that the, the right when it opens up, it shuts off. So if you have that type of warming drawer, then it's a problem. Um, I would say if you're not sure, then ask the Star Camp Baltimore. They're very, they're very up to date on all these things. Another thing is with the crock pot, um, sometimes you could have crock pots that shut off automatically when you pull out the, the insert. I don't know. I have no idea how to tell tell on this. And certainly, if you if you if it's like a thermostat, if you have a thermostat controlled crock pot, then it could be that when when you change the temperature, which you may do when you pull out the crock pot, then you have a problem having nothing to do with Hazara. Then you have a problem of it gets cold. And then you're causing it to turn on. I, I really don't know exactly how to tell which which types of crockpots. From what I understand, the ones that are, you know, just have the low, medium, high, they just maintain a steady level of heat and they're not going on and off. But if theoretically you had a crockpot that that worked with a thermostat, then it might be an issue to take out the uh, 
to take out the actual pot and you'd be much better off just scooping straight out. Okay, I'm sorry if I went a little bit over time. Everybody should be well and have a good talk and a good year.